I think, you know, well, technology. I think we should welcome everybody to our next episode of The Premise, and, and we're going to talk about technology. We're using some technology to bring this to you. Maybe you're watching this. Well, at least I hope you're watching this on, on some bit of technology, maybe on an iPad, maybe it would, on your computer. It would have to maybe be on... unless, unless this is, like, just coming straight into somebody's mind and that would be really we're, we're not there yet we're not there yet but we're get, we're working on it but we're not there in the church yet but this idea of technology and and maybe the church i know one of the things you're against sometimes is innovation in church practice sometimes i yeah. mean so let's talk a little bit about what this is but maybe before that could we use an old innovation how do we talk to god we don't need any technology to talk to god it's an innovation of prayer And, oh, you want me to do it? I do. Okay, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the gift of today, for this time together, for this chance to think about uh, our life together as uh, your people. Help us to know how to communicate uh, with one another and help us as we go through our conversation today to, to think about technology and its appropriate place in the church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, you know, one of the things I'm kind of proud of as, as a Lutheran is uh, uh, that, that Luther, maybe people don't know this, but you know, 500 years ago, there was an amazing invention in technology. There was something new on the scene, something hip, something cool, something really out there. There was this guy, his name was Gutenberg. And he had invented the movable typeset printing press. So block uh, printing presses and carvings and, you know, kind of when we were in sixth grade, we had to do a linoleum, you know, uh, print, cool. you know, where you did it. But you only had that one thing to stamp out. But, but Gutenberg, he took the different letters and you could arrange them, spell words, then you can do type and you can mass produce something. So mass communication was born. I even heard one guy say Luther was the first person to go viral. <laughs> Well, you know, that, of course, speaks to a different age, but, but of course, Luther... <laughs> it does speak... That's 500 years ago. That is, that's maybe two ages ago. That's not just speaks a different age. That's many age. But Luther and, and all of his, um, you know, the pamphlets uh, that, I mean, yeah. part, of it, part of it was the, the, the rising level of, of people's literacy in the vernacular languages. Uh, you do have to be able to read. You do have to be able to read. But, yeah. but the fact is that uh, uh, lots of people were reading, you know, German or French or, or, mm. or, or whatever, and so it, it, it didn't all have to be in Latin. The scholar, yeah, Luther published mm. a lot of scholarly stuff in Latin, yeah. but the pamphlets and the broadsides and the polemical stuff all went out. The good in, stuff in, is what you're saying. The good stuff went out. Uh, well, the good stuff. And that's what I heard. He, you know, he was a bestseller, and that's why they kept printing his stuff. Well, is they kept printing it, it because people wanted it. Well, and it was all it was all very polemical. He would yeah. he would write something. His opponents would write something. He would write something. Yeah. And you you used the viral thing, but in an adult forum just a couple of weeks ago, I, I I was was referring to this kind of stuff, and I said it's the 16th century version of Twitter explodes. I love it um, because in fact yeah. you know all these all these these, these pamphlet wars that yeah. went on made. Um, the theological debates and their practical implications uh, matters of, 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 of common knowledge and common conversation among, among all kinds of people. Sure. And, and isn't that what you know, technology does? It is, um, but, but can I go back to even another technology? This is not a new one. This is one that's falling out, but, but you've, got, you've got a bunch of them on there. That word Bible it comes from the Greek yeah. word that maybe people know. Uh, the Bible is just a Greek word that means book. And so the Bible is the book. And, and we don't think the about library. that. The library. Yeah, well, it is, is the library, yeah. And so this idea that, uh, uh, that a book was new technology mm -hmm. and that the Bible was revolutionary because before that, what people used to write on? Well, 
first papyrus and, and then parchment. Yeah, and so the scrolls were yeah. what everything was. And we know Jesus, you know, read from a scroll. And so this idea of cutting it, you know, and then putting it together and sewing it together, yeah. creating a Trying to a get book. to the right passage in a scroll. Uh, there's a lot. And so the technology of, of a book was revolutionary. And, and now we talk about, you know, uh, the printing press. And so uh, things didn't have to be handwritten. That was a, uh, an upgrade in technology. And now we're in the electronic world, Which where, is where all quantum. these things, you could, you could have right. really these online. Well, it's, it's, a, it's another quantum leap. We were talking about yes. how, so you're trying to find a passage in a scroll. You have to keep scrolling through the whole scroll you until you get to yeah. it. If you have a book, you can go to the page. Yeah. If you have it on a computer, you just search. Word and search. It pops oh, right up. Oh, it's delightful. It's, it's incredible. Yeah. I don't even, you know, it, it's amazing because back in, in my, uh, my previous life in the law, one of the things Ooh, that you always you're heard admitting to, to that. Did you hear that? He admitted, but it was a past life. You're saying you had a past life, I Paul? I did, yes. Bridie Murphy. No, I mean, I, you, we had to do a lot of legal research. And back as long as you aren't going to tell me you're Pocahontas you, in your past life. But okay, sorry. You I had to try to find precedents, and there yeah. were ways to look these things up, and it was really quite complicated. Yeah. Everything's everything's online now. Now all, all you have to do is just is just search online, and all this stuff comes up, uh, and and it's incredible. I, I don't uh, you know it's, it's it really is. I mean I'm 20 years older than you, but That's right, uh, he's but an it's, old man. It's it's a you, you didn't want to bring up. I mean you're, his age. Uh, it's it's a different something. world. It's a different world now. Yeah. From, from back, uh, you know, 35 years ago when I was practicing. Did you actually have to get up and, you know, turn the dial on the television when you were a kid? Yes. We did too, and then the dial would fall off and we had to use a pair of pliers don't to do it. It was terrible. Don't, <laughs> tur don't turn yeah. that channel. Yeah. Who got to be the remote control? You get to be the remote control. You go change the channel. I don't want to do it. I'm too lazy. Yeah. That was great oh. days. And again, you had to go through the channels. Yeah. People don't even realize, back in my day, we had to get up to change the channel, yeah. Exactly, yeah. and it was 10 miles uphill both ways <laughs> in the snow. Yeah, well, you your congregation hasn't come into the, the new world. My congregation just put up screens in the sanctuary, as, as some people, that was a hard turn, you know. Are we going to incorporate technology, screens, um, to help us? Because the old technology was a bulletin. Yes. And what was the technology before bulletins and, and uh, copiers came in or, or even duplicators? Did you ever have to use a duplicator well, or a mimeograph? Oh, yes. I still remember that smell. Oh, oh, those things. But before those, what did people do? Well, you had the hymn board. You had the hymn board where the numbers were up. That was and technology. People, yeah. yeah. And and people people just, you know, they most back in... Back in the day, most people brought their own, <laughs> right. you know, the, the little hymn. You had your personal one. And, yeah. and, it's, and, and they didn't have any music in them. They, they, right. they just had the text because you were supposed to just know. Know the tune. Uh, the, the tune. Yeah. Uh, and so well, that was, can that you was read music? Language. I can. We but, talked about most people couldn't read, you know, l language. But right. to read music, that's a whole other language. But I, I like that you're talking about these things. And, and we're getting a chance to think about the changes that, that the church has gone through. And now, you, you know, the church is trying to figure out, you know, we can't necessarily have people come to church now because of coronavirus. Well, and so right. we're trying to present some content in a creative and innovative. You're an innovator, Paul. I'm not. You are an the, innovator. The, the pandemic has has forced all of us, you know, into uh, uh. using some amount of technology. <laughs> I know you're kind of twitching when you're saying I that. Know, you're a little it's, uncomfortable. It's getting, you're like, rough. oh man. But see, for me, I, I really think you know this is one of the things I've learned is the church is usually not not known for being the groundbreaking institution, but in history past. You know, the, the printing press. The church really was the one to be on the front end of that innovation. You know, books. The church really was on the front end of that innovation. Um, you know, this idea of bulletins, and we got to mass produce, you know, these things for members to have because it'd be great if they had the bulletin in their hands and didn't have to navigate a hymnal. Sure. Um, you know, all of these things. Uh, today, as we think about the changes, it's, it's hard. 
change is hard and, and new technology is hard. Uh, who knows where you know things are headed? Like you said, maybe one day it'll just beam into your you know brain from from mine to yours. But A we're frightening not... thought. <laughs> Oh, the thoughts I could share with you. Oh, <laughs> genuinely this would be good. Thought. But but even you know, film, you know, recorded music, all of these things um, have been things the church has to decide. Are these useful? Um, are they good? Are they bad? Um, you, you know, today I hope we'll continue to think about. It. None of these things are good or bad in and of themselves. It's how we use them. You know, the technology and, and how it, it, you know, is used to help us to communicate. And that ultimately uh, it's the message that we have. And, and that there are tools that can help us to carry that message, to share it with people. We're grateful for your presence and tuning in here uh, today. Uh, God bless. We look forward to seeing you on another episode of What is the Premise? Bye. Bye.